This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it is the Awesome Cast, episode 324, live from the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, right at Talk Tech, Get Geeky, and it is election night in the U.S. of A. Uh, election night here in Pittsburgh, and, uh, and, and we'll be talking a little bit of uh, election technology, online, social media, a couple of different things. Uh, I am even like, I'm, I'm kind of watching it right now, CBS News is kind of my app for this thing. Uh, so I can still get my news if I feel like like actually watching real news um, that isn't local. Uh, Charlie Rose is telling is very serious on there right now. So, uh, but with me coming from Studio C, he's John Chichilla, ChillaTech.net gadget extraordinaire at Big Bank International Incorporated LLC. Hey, how's it going today? I'm on, this, on this on this fine. Fine election day. It's fine election day, which we'll get into a little bit of by why it's a very special election day for you, Chilla. Yes, a, it a is. little bit a little later in the show here. And also back with us is Cynthia Klosky at Cynthia Klosky on the Twitter. She's a partner over there at Shift Collaborative doing some really cool things. Well, hello. How are you? Welcome back. Welcome back. How are you doing? I am terrified. <laughs> here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that. We're all in this together on the internet, so uh, we can watch it all uh, um, on our iPads. <laughs> um, it'll be a lot more fun later, of course. Uh, uh, Wrestling Mayhem show. We are going to elect a uh, president of Mayhem. Uh, is how we're looking to celebrate this as well. Uh, so look forward to that if you if you uh, listen to multiple podcasts here. I think both of these are going to be a lot of fun for the election night tonight. So, anyways, uh, but this is the Awesome Cast. Check us out at awesomecast.net. Subscribe on Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, um, and video versions on YouTube and Facebook. Or the live stream is actually over on Facebook right now. That's what we've been using lately. We've been using Facebook Live via Wirecast, in case you're curious about that. Some out there have been asking lately. Uh, but you can always, no matter where we end up, what technology that we've uh, forsaken for the next one, you can uh, find that embedded or a link to the chat room or a chat room right there when we figure that part out again at live.awesomecast.net. You can also uh, uh, support the show on patreon.com slash awesomecast like a good, our good friend Mike Fedor of Mike Fedor Show uh, on the Twitters has been supporting us for a good long time right now at the dollar level. Thank you so much for that and everybody that does support the show and has supported the show in the past, you can uh, become a part of that. And you get some uh, inside info about what we're working on. And also, please check out all the awesome chats over at awesomecast.net. We uh, just talked with uh, last week Mike Quackenbush of uh, wrestling promotion Chikara Pro. They've got an Indiegogo going on right now. You can go support a wrestling video game right now to help them get it done a little quicker than what they're projected currently. So check out that interview and check out everything else going on. And we're sorry, anybody else, that our interviews have got you in trouble. I got some interesting news about that this week. Uh, but anyways, uh, but uh, so let's get into our awesome... Oh, hey, shout out to RiversEdgePGH.com. I think they are doing a live spot tonight uh, with election night. Uh, so in between shows, you can flip over there and see what they're, they got going on. Uh, but uh, we are there uh, playing on their stream uh, 8 a.m. Thursday mornings after Funny Money. So uh, go check them out. And we're also on their feeds as well. So, all right, let's get into our awesome thing of the week. So uh, this is the part where I disclose, hey, so I've been driving for Uber and Lyft lately. So like now when we talk about stories, do I have to disclose that? Is that, is that the journalistic thing to do? Probably. I think you have to do that. Yeah. I think if you're given an opinion on it, especially from a driver's perspective, you definitely have to. I definitely have to now. So, um, well, finally, last week, I, I've been driving for nearly a month for Uber. And I have been driving for, I finally got approved a week ago for Lyft because those are two wildly, wildly different po- processes here, right? Um, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of my awesome thing of the month or whatever, because, uh, because it's been kind of a fun extra thing I've been doing. 
you know, for a little bit of money, a little, just a little kind of curiosity to see see how it works. Um, I got into it because obviously um, I, I was involved in that um, um, uh, video for Mashable that we talked about on here a little bit ago with the self driving cars with Uber and everything. It got me thinking about you know, well, wh- okay, what is it like to be a driver and how easy it is is it to be a driver? I got a new enough car that that's you know in decent shape, so I, I was like, okay, let's give this a shot. Um, First of all, amazed at how quick you get signed up with Uber. Like they go through a black background check, you fill out your papers, submit your your insurance that's that's applicable, whatever is required for the state, and you're going in like I think it took me like it took me about 5 days, but there was some glitch that wasn't approving me. Here's the thing, I found a glitch in both processes while I was signing up <laughs> that I had to go to support and say, "Hey, can we fix this so I can get going?" Um, so I sat on there like just flipping on cause I got all the emails says I was approved after like two days and for about three days I kept trying to log in and it wouldn't let me go. Uh, Lyft on the other hand, they actually have you meet with a mentor, basically verify you're a person and you don't suck, I think. Um, but, uh, so, so everything goes through and I got caught up in that process and dis- disconnected somehow from my original mentor I was trying to schedule with and took me about three weeks to figure out and finally, you know, email support and say, Hey, what's going on here? And again, you meet with somebody, they go over, you know, everything and look at your car and kind of take pictures of everything and you verify your turn signal works and, and, and stuff like that. And then you're good to go. Is the, is the mentor like an experienced driver or yes. is it, how, how, how do they choose the mentor? I have not seen the process that gets us there yet um but no that it's 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 definitely somebody that's been driving for a while even my mentor was somebody that had another side business like she 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 does uh baking and she was making like cheesecakes for something down at uh, the convention center uh told me that she was in the running for shark tank for a while there too wow. so <laughs> I, and she's doing left on the side and it's it's you know you know one of those things so uh kind of a, a fellow entrepreneur right so, uh, yeah, and I kind of got into it thinking like, okay, I like driving around the city in general. Like I literally like, don't mind just like, Hey, I need to unwind drive around the city, but I feel it's weird when I don't have a destination, I guess. That's why I love like when I'm going to video gigs and everything, I get to go to different parts of the city. Um, and I get to meet different people. I love networking. I love meeting different people. And also a little bit of the, Hey, you know, this, this is networking. Like, like that's one thing that dawned on me when I was in San Diego was a Lyft driver said that he was a graphic designer. And I'm like, wait, this is the kind of people that, that drive this, that are usually in these cars. And, and over the time that I've been, I've been doing it, I've met a writer for the Washington Post, a sports writer. Um, so we got to talk about the Amazon thing a little bit. Um, I've met um, all kinds of different people that, like other people that work at work hard that, that you know, just, you know, have popped in or out. And I've worked around that stuff. Other kind of entrepreneurs. One dude I was talk to, talking to about uh, AI the entire trip. I picked over over by uh, uh, Bakery Square. Um, so, like, I'm picking up my kind of people. You know what I mean? For the most part. When they're not drunk, of course. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> which I have a couple stories for that, too. But, no, it's been a blast, to be quite honest. And, and it's a little extra money that, in my pocket. That seems like a really good networking technique, though, if there's a region that you would want to network in, like you're saying, if you, if you like kind of hover around Bakery Square, you're more likely to get the people. Right. It's perfect. You right. Know? Or right. wherever else you might want to be. That could be something if you're like, hey, I want to get in with Google. Let's go hang out by Google. And eventually, who, like, who, that's exactly the kind of person that's going to do this, right? Uh, it, it, you know, people people around those kinds of businesses, or or you know, hang around certain businesses, certain time of day. You know, they're going for the airport too, so you have a bit longer uh, uh, commute with them. Um, so it, it's been interesting. And also, like like it's also been you know really interesting to see what kind of people I get picked up. Um, one was a, a, a lady that was going to the airport, going back to Canada. Apparently, everybody had been called in for an all-hands meeting at this uh, uh, tech company of some sort. Didn't entirely pin down what they do, just the drama from the phone calls. <laughs> and uh, just kind of reaffirming, oh, hey, that's not a business I want to be in, you know, kind of thing. Uh, the drunks are fun, mostly, except for the two girls that yelled at each other the entire trip from uh uh carson street on the south side over to uh walnut street 
Uh, so, so that was fun. Um, almost like an argumentative debate or was no, it just, they were no, just no, no. Uh, like, uh, you're really horrible because your father's an alcoholic debate, uh, <laughs> that, like that bad. Right. Uh, yeah. so I thought it was going to get physical and I'd have to stop and kick him out of my car. I actually did have to tell the one girl to leave the car wow. because she was pouting in the corner <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, no, none of you are redeemable in this. Everybody get out of my car. Uh, so yeah, pretty, pretty horrible. They broke but, I mean, that's working on a, I mean, that sounds like an, I hope that wasn't like a morning. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, no, no. You know, the times of day that you work, oh, yeah. then oh, we'll yeah. kind of just dictate a little bit of that, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a Saturday, Friday, Saturday night is, is what I've, I've, I've been doing. So I've been, I've been kind of figuring out like, okay, let's try an afternoon at this time. Let's try this night, you know, over in this region, kind of still feeling out what's what, right? Um, so now, are you tracking all your data, right? Because I mean, this is valuable data for you and for your, you know, what's, where's the ROI for you, right? Right, exactly, exactly. So, so that's, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of feeling out the process. I'm not really documenting it. Um, but I know, okay, honestly, my favorite thing to do is hang out in Oakland. Uh, Oakland at, uh, on the, on the, you know, th- basically Thursday through Sunday. Because I'm just trucking kids from house party to house party. And the, and the college kids over there are, are kind of the more fun people. Uh, best experience was when I picked up four guys over there. The uh, college night is Thursday, so so you'll get a lot of that stuff. Um, picked them up, taking them over to the strip, and uh, not a minute into the trip, uh, the Fresh Prince song comes on the radio, and on cue, everybody sings it, just like all my friends do. <laughs> and there's the f- me and four strangers all just jamming out, knowing all the lyrics until that awkward part in the middle um, and the extended cut um, that you know to the Fresh Prince. So, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's been really fun. Um, I mean, every once in a while you get somebody that just really doesn't want to talk and maybe is not too great, you know, um, and, and completely says, no, go this way and avoid traffic and put you right in the middle of traffic and they're even more pissed, um, you know, like on Steelers game day when they're just trying to get across town and had nothing to do with the game. Uh, but, no, generally it's really good. I mean, I, I think I think there's definitely, if you don't like driving around the city, stay away from this. Um <laughs> Okay, <laughs> just I mean, you know, it's like yeah, it's a real easy way to make money. Yeah, but no, stay away from this. Um, if if you get frustrated about the rush hour traffic, like I just got caught in and wasn't sure if I was going to make it back in time for this show, uh, for instance, because um, you're really kind of um, um, at the mercy. I mean, you could say you could cancel a trip if you're like, no, I'm gonna not going to do that. It's your, your 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 prerogative, but I like to. I think like part of the system is you need to accept things because then it kind of breaks down if a lot of people are, are rejecting things. Like there was a I went I went out for a little bit last night, picked up a a, a woman down in uh, uh, Carnegie at the art gallery, um, and she was going all the way out to Greensburg. So that was a good trip, you know. But again, now I'm not all you know taking all these different trips all over the place. I got nice one nice long one. Turns out uh, she completely presented at PodCamp on a panel with uh, uh, Mike Pound about bullying. <laughs> and we like really kind of know each other, sort of. Uh, so that was fun. Uh, there's another guy I picked up just a, a hill over here. Went to Butler Regional Hospital during rush hour. He was being admitted for alcoholism. So, and of course, um, one of the podcasts we do here at Sober Trying Media is with a guy that's an expert on 12 step programs as a counselor and everything. So at least I had a little bit of ammunition of, you know, what to talk to him about, you know, but you mostly wanted to talk about sports. So it wasn't so bad. Um, the drunks are interesting, mostly. Okay. Sometimes dicks, uh, I had to tell a guy to, that I picked up out of the middle of nowhere, uh, up off of 79, uh, that, to uh, please not drink in my car. And he threw his red solo cup out the window. Um, um, yeah, yeah. That kind of stuff. I uh, had to mark one guy. I've, I've marked two people down. I've officially marked two people down. The girls that were yelling at each other and then the guys that were kind of racist on the way to the strip club. So I was like, nope, 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 not cool people. So that's that's kind of, but generally, like, I'll get, like, one kind of horrible person a night. But everybody's really pleasant for the most part. More so on Lyft, I think, because uh, I think the culture that they do over there um, um, kind of, you know, kind of kind of pushes that. That that is, that is kind of friendlier people. Uh, the idea is with Uber is I'm your personal driver versus Lyft is um, I'm your buddy with a car. 
So, um, and some people get into that. Some people don't. Uber kind of encourages getting in the back seat, and Lyft encourages getting in the front. And that kind of intermingles, right? Uh, depending on who they are. So I, I think it's cool. I, I think it's a, if you're in a city that has this, and um, it's nice that you can turn it on whenever. It's nice that you're like, I got a few hours here, or you know, um, hey, you know, I need a, I need a couple extra bucks. You can turn it on, go do it. You're completely in control of your own destiny in making money, which is very entrepreneurial, very kind of if you're a self-starter or something like this. Um, if you got an okay car, if you, you know, I, I've heard multiple people that says, I quit my job and, and did this because I was sick of my job. And I went and did this until, you know, this was the thing or I figured out something else. And that's kind of, you know, that's, that's kind of a really cool thing. It's a very liberating technology. And so, so you can definitely make a decent decent amount of money doing it past, obviously, off, after you cover your gas and yeah. car wear and tear and whatnot. My, my take-home, not including gas and everything, but my take-home working probably a Friday and Saturday was, you know, probably a pretty hot, you know, Friday and Saturday, of course, with the holidays and everything and very warm last few weekends um, was was a good 400 bucks. Okay. So, I mean, and if you're like working all the rush hours and all the places, you know, all, all the times when there's booths and, and surges and everything like that and working those kinds of deals and the uh, penguins and stealers and stuff like that, I, I think you can make some pretty decent money. Um, but again, it's not just about the money I'm bringing home in pocket. It's about the connections I'm making. I passed out my business card to, uh, you know, several people that was like, I think I need somebody like you, you know, and, and that's, that's been a really nice thing too. Um, there's an article that goes around about the guy that made uh, $250,000 a year on uh, driving for Uber. Now he didn't make that from Uber. He made that selling jewelry in his car (laughs) to his riders. So I'm not looking to do that necessarily, but I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of opportunity there. Mm-hmm. You have a captive audience, kind of, right? So I think there's a lot of, you know, a lot of things you can do with that, whether it be the networking thing, whether it be actually, like, like selling something. You know, I, I put in the cup holders uh, in the back seat, I put cards for Psychic Media and uh, Bite Me Bakery, because you never know, right? Um, have the little care package and everything uh, until, like, some drunk did something really horrible to my care package. They had like candy and stuff into it. And I'm like, well, that's going to need clean. And I need to figure out a different way to do this. So, but so, so does either program have rules about that kind of cross selling? Not that I've seen. No, absolutely not that I've seen. And actually Lyft encourages, um, not, not so much the, the kind of pimping your stuff, but, uh, um, a very customized ride. You know, um, um, they, 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 they want you to kind of have fun with it. You know, so, um, yeah. I but think- there's different fun. And like, I just watched a video last night about like multi-level marketing. Like if mm-hmm. you're, if you're preaching the, I don't, I, I, I'm just going to not say any, but if you're preaching some sort of MLM kind of thing for an entire ride out to Green Tree. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, th- I it's it back on your radio. Right. It has to be done fairly tactful because you don't want to be, um, um, you don't want to be like salesman to, to somebody that you're driving for, for 10, 20 minutes, right? But uh, but some people completely will and will do good with it, right? And mm-hmm. uh, with those star- strong arm tactics. I'm not a kind of person that does that. All my stuff uh, I do in just general conversation, right? And which, yeah, I mean, you know me, I, I do what I do, like this show, like like the other things. I just talk about what I'm into. and if it And that will be a path into talking about, you know, Something that I do for a living, right? Uh, so, so, so yeah, over the week, um, over this week at work, we 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 watch videos to um, improve our marketing minds, and we watched um, the greatest movie ever sold, this Palm Wonderful movie mm-hmm. with you know what I mean with um, what's his name that did the um, Morgan did the McDonald's Morgan Marla. Spurlock Morgan Spurlock I saw this one. But so now, can you do product placements? Can you sell advertising in your Lyft? Can you sell advertising in your thing? You're, there's another line of, of work for you. I have considered it. 
I have absolutely okay. considered it. I have absolutely, because I was already going to kind of put, I'm, I, well, I've been trying to get, I've been telling the wrestling promoters, I'm like, hey, get me your flyers. I have a captive audience. Um, and, and, and kind of setting up, uh, 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 the back. So, you know, I kind of drive people. I'm trying to figure out ways that I can get people's attention. Like other than like signs that say, Hey, this, this, uh, this driver is really into technology and pro wrestling, you know, cause that can spark conversation. You know, I want, I want to have some kind of visual conversation starter of people along a certain like-minded, right? Uh, because one that'll make the trip better. Cause we've made that connection, you know, just, just in general, you know, and maybe, I mean, that, you know, cool five-star trip trip or, or tips if you're on Lyft. Um, so, and I'm trying to be as conversational as possible, but it's kind of me naturally, right? Uh, so. Like, a, like you, you phrased it as sort of a poll, like, you know, say, hey, my poll this week is this. And really what it is, what, whatever the answer is that they give you, that gives you a conversation starter, you know? Ooh, that could be fun. That could be fun. Like, we can have like, hey, ha- you know, hashtag... Hashtag, uh, uh, I, I've been considering uh, greeting people to the Sorgatron Express. I'm working on the intro. Uh, so mm-hmm. when they get in the car. But, uh, you know, but generally I'm like, hey, yo, hey, yo, how's it going? How's your day? Uh, let me know if you need to change any uh, uh, change of the, the, the temperature in here or the or the music. Um, so I just, you know, trying to uh, accommodate people and kind of find that comfort zone. I want to try to build on that as I go here. So uh, it, it's fun. It's fun. And it's, again, it's just like I you know, got back from, from driving in the entire weekend on a trip and I really needed to unwind. So going out on a Sunday night, I love doing evenings because I feel like I have more control on the road because like there's nobody on the road. Right. Uh, so, so that's been kind of fun. So really enjoying that. Don't want to do airports cause they put you in a queue and you could sit out there past your hour limit in the cell lot and have to pay for the cell lot. Uh, so, and it doesn't, it doesn't make sense that I can tell, but I don't mind taking people to the airport, uh, but and finding something on the way back. So it's been fun. It's a, uh, I will probably have more stories uh, uh, with this as I go. Um, I also, I'm trying, I'm going to snag a, a dash cam so I can put that up partially for security, of course, and partially in case I catch something pretty cool. I catch caught the entire argument of those, those girls because I, I put it, I, I, I stuck it in the back just in case since it was Halloween uh, Saturday night, basically. So I'm like, listen, if anything weird or bad is going to happen, it's going to be tonight. Uh, so let's make sure I have like at least something, you know, in there. Uh, so I just kind of had it stuck in the back on my, on my on the selfie stick. So, but no, it's pretty fun. I, I recommend it. If you guys have any questions, anybody thinking about doing something like that, um, well, let me know. I, I I think it's absolutely a thing to help you get outside of a job rut or anything like that. You know what I mean? So. All right, Chilla, what is your awesome thing of the week? So mine comes on on the the heels of uh, of things breaking. So unfortunately, my Apple Thunderbolt display bit the dust um, a, about a week ago. So I was I was stranded without a large monitor. So I had to quickly find something that I could pick up or or get through Amazon at, at a reasonable price. So. The the Samsung it's the the U two eight E five ninety D, and I did include the Amazon link. You can pick these up also. Best Buy carries them in in a lot of their stores, um, but it is a four K twenty eight inch monitor. Ooh. I'm pretty impressed with it so far. Um, coming in at like the three hundred and sixty dollar price tag was was pretty important to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna look to get my my thunderbolt display fixed if at all possible because i think it's a power issue um but if it costs too much it's probably just not going to be worth it um display it takes some tweaking and playing around with to get your blacks black but i'm pretty impressed with the picture um i'm actually running it well over 1080p but i'm not running it at the full kind of 4k so i'm running at 2560 by 1440 that resolution will go all the way to 3840 by 2160. Um, so, so I mean, things get pretty small even at, on a 28-inch on a device. Um, like I said, it, pretty nice to work with two HDMI's and a Display Port, um, which is a lot different from my Thunderbolt display that had one Thunderbolt cable. Um, 
I will honestly say I am truly missing my Thunderbolt display from the from that aspect of I plugged one cable into my laptop and it also ran power to my laptop. And then on the back of the monitor was four USB ports, audio in and out, um, Ethernet, et cetera. Um, so I'm actually looking at Thunderbolt docks to kind of revise my workstation, but obviously that's an additional cost. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be pending the, the repairability and cost to repair the, the thunder, the Thunderbolt display. But so far, like I said, really happy. To, I was, I was really nervous about the blacks being black. Um, obviously the, the refresh rate on this monitor is, is one millisecond, whereas the Thunderbolt, because of the panel, it's made out of the panel gives excellent color representation, but the, the um, refresh rates like 11 milliseconds. So it's 11 times that um, you get some tearing if you're playing fast video and whatnot or video games. But for the, for the price, I think this, this is great. It's a great device. I'd highly, highly recommend it. Um, you will want to take some time and play with the settings from brightness and contrast and uh, the, the different modes that it has and whatnot. But uh, so far I'm, I'm rather impressed. Awesome. So yeah, we'll include the link in the show notes as well, uh, so you guys can go check that out. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still looking. Like I said, I'm still snagging hand-me-down monitors to uh, to, to supplement my, my my monitor needs myself. But I'm usually on a MacBook anyway. So, um, but cool, go check that out. Sandy Flosky, what is your awesome thing of the week? Um, I I don't actually have an awesome thing of the week that's uh, a technological sort of an event. Mostly I have been, I I mentioned the terrified part. Um, So I've been watching The Walking Dead and following election results. I mean, uh, you know, coverage. So mostly I've been not sleeping. I'm just going to blame that. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, yeah, that goes together. <laughs> uh, well, okay. We'll talk about uh, a little bit more uh, election things. There's a couple of things um, that kind of hit uh, this this time frame uh, uh, for us. Uh, but first, I want to give a shout out to our friends Slice on Broadway at sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, they've been supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for uh, a couple years now. Uh, right up here, uh, Rico and the guys up here in Broadway in the Beachview neighborhood. Please get off the train if you're uh, coming through. Check out, check them out for sure. Uh, but also, please uh, check out their other locations, Carnegie, uh, down in Carnegie, PA, down on Main Street. Uh, the, the wonderful, they, they've really done a lot down there last couple couple years and really kind of rejuvenated that area down in Carnegie. Please go check it out. By the way, maybe the biggest gecko I think I've ever seen down there driving by the other day. Um, but no, go check them out uh, there and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. I do believe that is open all year round, not just in season. So you guys uh, need to get a lunch if you can cross the Roberto Clemente or happen to be on the north side. Uh, please go uh, check them out. PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter, as well as Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the Instagram. Go uh, let them know you heard about us, heard about them on us, the awesome cast. And uh, thank you so much for those guys for supporting the show. All right, it's election day. Charlie Rose is still telling me how it is on CBS News. By the way, I think this is great. Like, this has been... I love that there is something I could click on on my Apple TV on something where I'm like, okay, what is happening? You know, if there is that, hey, hey, something's going on, it's going to be a live report kind of thing. I have something that can default, you know what I mean? And, and kind of hit that up. So, so and, and, and on top of that, CNN also live streaming their entire broadcast uh, on the internet today. Uh, so you don't have to do the login or anything else. If, you know, they have to have a cable uh, or anything like that. So, so cord cutters rejoice. You get to panic with everybody else in the country, um, <laughs> but uh, in the, in a similar fashion. But uh, well, soon you'll have the, the TV app to lead you directly to all the different different apps that are that are hosting that type of content. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's kind of cool. So, so what are you, you guys uh, looking at this election cycle? I mean, it's always really interesting since it's, you know, especially the presidential where we are, you know, looking at mostly what's going on, you know, you know in that election and, 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 and that, that technology bump, you know, just like the Olympics every four years, right? Uh, okay. How, how much more tech is, is into this the next four years than it was four years ago. Right. I, I feel like, I think the last one was the first real social media election that we had, uh, when Obama got, uh, uh, reelected. 
So um, other than, you know, the obviously like very social media kind of campaigns, I guess, if you can call some of those that. Um, what, what are some things that you're looking at? Chilla, you have an interesting um, how. Well, I'll just let you explain. So, so uh, it may or may not surprise people, but up until this year, I've never been registered to vote. So obviously, up until this year, I've also never voted. Um, so it was my first time at the polls. Um, I was a, I was a bit taken back, and I, I I think we're a little more ahead of some of the other states and other areas with with the electronic voting and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I was, and and I don't know what it was like at your polling locations, but early in the morning this morning, I got there right after the polls opened, so I could then get to work. It it surprised me how many people tried to leave the poll site without completing their the voting process. So when you vote, you make your selections. There's the red button up at the top that says vote. And then you have to confirm. They hit the vote button, but they never they weren't hitting the, conf- the confirmation button. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm guessing when the polls aren't as active, it's probably not as hard. But I literally watched seven people get chased like they had hit the doorway leaving the, the room and the people were chasing and running after them. In fact, I got chased after because they thought that I was at a different unit or whatever. And I was like, no, nope, that wasn't me. And they're like, yeah, it was nice. They said, come back here for a minute. So I came back and I'm like, that wasn't where I was at. So it, it kind of really surprised me and it, it, it almost worried me, you know, I did. I did watch them actually miss catching someone. So mm-hmm. I guess that person's vote didn't count. But and here's it, a, here's, it, 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 it was definitely eye opening. Those on video for those that may not be in Pennsylvania or don't vote, um, as Chiller was until today. Uh, this is this is what the uh, uh, machines look like. Basically, you you pick your thing. Uh, that vote uh, uh, light uh, blinks red, and it asks you to confirm back down on the screen. You're, you're actually supposed to hit the vote thing. Hit that, confirm on the screen, and you're good to go. So, yeah. And it looks like, have you, were you amazed by, I've always been fascinated because it looks like they put an N64 cartridge into the thing to, uh, to yeah, load it. Yeah, that, that, I was a little confused by that because it was when we walked up there, obviously it's waiting for him to insert that. Um, the, the one thing I will say, and, and, and I, I've actually tried to, uh, I'm starting a campaign for 2020. I, I was very, very, very upset as a first time voter, the one thing that I really looked forward to mm-hmm. was an I voted sticker. <laughs> and I am sad and stickerless. That's so sad. <laughs> I was usually the, the where I vote um, often does not have them. Uh, and this time they did and I but they have them before you actually vote. You could stand in the line and pick up a sticker and then leave. Now why do you would do that? I can't imagine. run away, but, run away laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have to vote. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw a lot of people on social media today with their stickers, and I, I posted mm-hmm. to a lot of them and 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 actually tweeted Bill Peduto, hoping that by 2020 all polling sites will have the I voted stickers <laughs> in adequate numbers. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, ours didn't have any. I, I mean, I was I was I was there rather early, and and there were definitely no stickers to be had. Mm-hmm. I wonder, I mean, I assume that that is a polling place thing. Like, they don't just get a packet. You know, they uh, yeah, I'm guessing, it's, and someone I talked to said that someone that, 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 that was working the, the polls where she went stated that she brought she brought them on her own. They weren't provided. Um, I saw some people in Ohio. Theirs has, like, the Ohio state kind of what the state looks like and for I voted. So, so yeah, I'm guessing it's, it, there, it's not standard issue. But I, I think it should become standard issue, at least in Allegheny County, because mm-hmm. I, I I don't outside of Allegheny County. It seems like there was a lot more people with the stickers, but um, not around here. Uh, Chilla, here's here's a here's a, some inside info for you. First of all, if you think that your polling place uh, needs to needs a little bit of correction and needs to make sure things are lined up like those stickers, it's actually probably not that hard for you to become part of the staff. <laughs> <laughs> As we discovered when uh, we when Chachi was uh, running for mayor, 
that one year uh, on Twitter. And we, I just wrote him in for everything that I didn't know. And he ended up becoming an, an elect, elect, uh, election judge uh, at two places somehow um, <laughs> and, and accepted one of them for a little bit. So, so there you go. Um, so next time you see that that's up on the ballot and uh, ballotpedia.org, by the way, I discovered just a couple of days ago is very handy. Uh, so especially those primaries, I think is where a lot of that comes up. So, so if you see that kind of thing, just like kind of tell all your friends or say on Twitter or we'll say it here on the show, like, you know, if, I guess, I guess it's going to be everybody in Dormont, but, uh, uh, you know, just kind of put, get that around. And I don't think it's going to be very hard and you can make sure you have stickers next time. But to the point of, you know, the user experience of voting in Pennsylvania, those mm-hmm. machines that we're using these past couple of years, where the interaction is on the screen for most of it, and then it's outside the screen on that lighted vote button, and you think, oh, now it's done, and then it comes back to the screen. Like at the, our polling place, we've got like signs up, and the uh, mm-hmm. older gentleman comes out and makes the same joke to everybody. Like, first of all, have you ever used this machine before? And you say, no. He says, well, at least not today, right? He said it's just literally everyone <laughs> who voted. So, um, and you know what? He enjoyed it every time. So God bless him. But, um, but the fact that the interface does that, it's just so sad. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's a, it's just a poor experience overall. And so in the polling place I went to, no one like left without getting that approval, but only because they were all individually coached by this guy with the bad joke at the beginning, you know, before right. every voting. And it must have been become such an issue this morning because I know people that went much later in the in the in the day, and they were saying that the when they went in they were they were definitely reminded multiple times on the way to the booth that to to hit the vote button and then hit confirm. Yeah, they 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 reiterated every time I go to it like they, they always have. Um, it's always the same people. Uh, but yeah, no, it's 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 definitely yeah, it, it's a it's a rough UI, unfortunately. But um, I, I think there's something about having the physical button like adds to the confirmation, you know, to to say, yeah, this was this vote did definitely did count. I didn't accidentally approve this, you know. So I, I think that was and that's the last thing. Yeah, that has to be the last. Thing. Right. Right. Yeah. It, it should end there. And then, yeah, then they add the extra con- confirm and it gets weird. But um, but uh, uh, so so. Tell me about my ride. Hold on, my my ride to vote dot org here. So so, that, so so this afternoon, I was sitting at my desk and I got a text message. So I looked over at my phone and I was really impressed. Uh, I got a text message and I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure how, and it came from an area code two one five number. But um, so I picked up the phone and I was I was I was very impressed. There was the the my ride to vote dot org campaign um was providing uh lyft and uber discounts with 15 dollar credits f- both ways so 15 dollars in credit going to and 15 dollars in credit coming back from your polling site so i i thought that was pretty impressive especially for for people that may be further away from their polling site or, or having it not have a car or having issues getting to and from the site. I I thought it was, I thought it was a really good way to kind of push that last minute. You, you don't have a reason for the most part to, to not go out and vote. That's great. And I know as, as writers, we've been getting um, emails about, about these in advance as well. So, um, but yeah, and I said, it's like kind of a bipartisan thing. Um, related to that, because I see North Carolina's on here as well. Uh, uh, I've been getting texts from North Carolina Democrats about early voting. Uh, so, uh, hey, Kim from North Carolina Democrats. Not, I'm not in North Carolina. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, but th- thankfully, the link that I finally clicked the link on this last one. And I've been getting texts for the last two weeks from North Carolina Democrats. Uh, so uh, it does. It, it, it's just a, it's a HillaryClinton.com. Um, where do I need to vote? So actually, I could find my polling place uh, from from this. So it wasn't in, in, in you know entirely lost. Ooh, in Espanol as well. Oh, Equanda donde podos votar. Uh, so and now everything on my phone is going to be Spanish. Okay, 
putting that away. Um, but uh, no, uh, so the big resource for me was uh, Ballotpedia.org, like I mentioned. Um, because I've always been okay. There's the big elections, you know. Obviously, we've been like done to death on those ones for a while. But I've always, it's always been hard for me to find a resource to say, no, 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 no. What happens? What's what's what do I need to vote for? Right? Like what state representatives? What um, uh, what's on the what's on the? You know, I, I learned about the 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 um the age thing because I mean, you know, sometimes I'll have ball, uh, ballot questions like uh, we had one about. Uh, extending the required reti- retirement age of um, as a Supreme Court judges or judges in general, I think it was in Pennsylvania. And and sometimes you just kind of yeah, yeah. Sometimes you get those and you're like, like okay, I guess I got to answer this, uh, yes or no. And you know, you know, and you think about it right there, right? And that's not the best way to make a decision on something like that, right? So I had that in my head uh, uh, going into into it. You know, I was like, okay, the, you know, who are these guys? And you could actually track through. Um, because my big thing lately is whenever I'm, I'm questioning candidates, I'll just kind of go back through and, and find anything about their record and just look up Internet technology, you know, things like that. To Because that's basically my main basis is, okay, I know this is a bad decision when it comes to technology, right? If this guy says that it's a series of tubes, he's out, right? Like that kind of thing. So, so I, I, and like the one was, uh, uh, graduated with like a degree in, you know, technology and stuff. Uh, so I'm like, okay, this is my guy, you know, like it, that, so it's nice to be able to drill into those cause it's been super frustrating in years past. And I'm hoping something like Ballotpedia sticks around cause I found this resource similar to this in the past and it, and it disappeared by the time I got around to it one election. So, uh, so go check that out. Ballotpedia.org. If there's any way to support them, please do. What what's the what's the site? Ballotpedia dot org. So I'm saving that one away. Save that one away, and hopefully remember it in next election cycle. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's good. You just <laughs> you enter your address and uh, like your full address because you know section the section here, um, and and it'll pull up. It pull, it pulled up everything. There were no surprises when I when I went to vote. So that was, that was really kind of nice. So what you do is you you set you set a calendar invite for like October first, twenty twenty, with right. this link in it. But for, <laughs> but for primaries too and stuff, right? Yeah. Um. Oh, what was it? Oh, you can also print the ballot out and take it with you, so you remember who you wanted to vote for. So that's valuable. That's that's huge. That's that's huge. I. I in some- in some states, you know, like California, where they have all those referenda, like I remember when I lived out there, I had to study. I literally had to study before, like even more than what you're saying, and like take a cheat sheet every time. It was a lot of, it was work. I mean, it's work of being a citizen and all that, but it was hard to make all those decisions. And so that kind of a tool, I don't want it to give me the answers because, you know, it's got biases in it as well. I mean, everything mm-hmm. probably does, right? But at least it gives you more information or at least helps the more that it would like link out to useful resources, the better. I, I guess I would only wonder about like what are the hidden biases of it. So, so I, I dove in a little bit, especially the state reps and everything. It gives you a list of important votes that they were involved in and whether it was a yay or a nay. Uh, this, this, this vote was on da, 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 yay or nay. So um, I thought that was pretty cool. And I, I wish I had more time to spend with it. Uh, to to really study up on this stuff, but um, but but for a quick like, okay, I need to make a decision. Boom, 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 boom. You know, it it it, it was pretty nice. I, I got to dig on one or two people and 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 you know feel a little more confident about my vote instead of going ah that guy I saw more signs, you know. So, um, Chilla, you also I thought it was interesting. We were talking about a little bit beforehand. What got you to vote? So. And a lot of people have, have pressured me not not to necessarily vote in a specific direction, but just to get out there and vote. And the, the, the oddly enough, or or not oddly enough, um, there was a whole campaign that 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 Joss Whedon did up for Save the Day and Go Vote um, that had a slew of celebrities, particularly around the the Marvel comic book universe. Um, uh, that that kind of did a they, they did a bunch of YouTube videos and the save the day 
think it's dot org, um, kind of put out a, a, a lot of PSAs and, and I, 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 I found it or it's save the day dot vote. Um, I, I've, I've just found the, the message compelling, compelling enough and they made it easy enough. And I've actually looked at, you know, the whole registration process many, 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 many years ago. Um, the ability to do it completely online um, and, and kind of it made it a lot easier and more accessible for me to register um, that and, and the, the save the day site kind of led you through the process for PA. Um, so, yeah, it was it was very easy. I could have still decided at the last minute to not necessarily go, but um, it, it, it definitely moved me. And the idea of seeing Mark Ruffalo naked um, swayed my decision. <laughs> well, there you go. Whatever, whatever works. Was the, what was so? Was it the difficulty of registering in the past? Was your major? Um, it was the so, so. I would say it was the difficulty of registering. I didn't necessar- necessarily feel passionate about any of the candidates. I remember feeling more ca- passionate as a kid during like the Ross Perot, Clinton. I don't even remember who else was running at the time. Um, I think that would have been Bush election. I remember feeling more passionate back then as a kid about that election than I have in some of the previous elections. So I think some of the some passion in, within this election kind of drove me definitely to the polls um and also the friction-free ability to 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 register doesn't it seem like though you know we talk about um or people talk about if if things are done automatically for you then you're going to do them you know so so like like everyone is signed up as a um I don't know like an organ donor unless you have to opt out you know what I mean and then the rates of organ donating go up donating go up. So I wonder whether there couldn't be a more automated way that everyone just gets registered and it isn't so terribly hard. I think, it, you know, doesn't it just, I don't even remember doing it. That's how long ago I did it. You know, it's not like I tried. It, it seems like it somehow worked into getting a driver's license or something. Yeah, you know? that, I thought so mm-hmm. too. I thought so too. Hmm. Cause I, I remember... So, I remember explicitly. It's so important to our, our like society that it would seems like we should want that, like that we should vote that in, and the fact that we have it maybe fits in with larger issues about really vote suppression and other challenges that we've got going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's for another podcast. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, I want to touch on this one, uh, Cynthia. About uh, uh, no, not the Harry Potter one, but I do kind of want to talk about Harry Potter. Tell me what Slack is. <laughs> so my, we talked. We mentioned Microsoft is taking on Slack, right? But Slack had an interesting response here, right? They posted uh, um, a, an, like an open letter on their on their blog, I think their Medium or whatever blog. And then, I, if I'm not mistaken, they also made it as a full page um, ad in the New York Times or some other larger oh, paper of record, where they, you know, if you read it with any sort of uh, thoughtfulness, it's really passive aggressive. It's like, hey, thanks for joining us in this market. I'm so, we're so glad you're here. By the way, we think you're going to screw this up. And let us tell you, you know what I mean? It's just so... It, is it, it's is just, it kind of so like snarky. the Apple IBM welcome uh, ad that they took out? It's, it's really, actually, it, in tone, it is not unlike, I would say, the um, Mac PC ads, the, those mm-hmm. TV ads. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Very, really fairly condescending in this, oh, gosh, we're so cool, you know, kind of a way. And you, you're so lame. So, and the only thing that really saves that, those ads is John Hodgman being um, just so funny and charming. So, but anyway, so, so Slack took out, this, um, took out this ad, published this thing. It got a lot of play. And that was just kind of funny in itself. And it's very, it's also, I think, very defensive, self-defensive, like, this is hard stuff and, and, you know, you should be careful. It's just kind of funny, you know. Did you guys read it? Did you guys see it? I, I had not seen this one. I had, I had read that there was kind of a response of, 
they wrote kind of a business related response as well that I that I perused around. You know, they they're they're happy to have competition in the category. They think it's going to do, and, and you know, I, I talk about that a lot on this show. Is you know, I, I want more competition because it really drives um, the innovation side. So, so I do find this one. I'm, I'm I'm reading through it as you as you were talking. I, I find it hysterical, and it it does make me think of a lot of things that that Microsoft could definitely work on. Um, I just wonder, and I, I heard you know. Microsoft claimed that they've been working on the, the, the teams for 18 months. I've, I, th- I think they're, they're not necessarily being truthful for how long it was worked on. And, and I wonder with some of the, the personal things that I've seen with Microsoft and their inability to respond quickly and fix things. And, and, you know, Slack has, has an immediate response to a lot of things that go on with their platform. So it's going it, to, this is going to be a different way to think for Microsoft. The one thing that keeps me from the Slack side of things is in, in a regulated environment, such as, such as a bank um, or in healthcare, um, Slack's not HIPAA compliant. Mm-hmm. So maybe this will, what I think would be awesome is if it pushed Slack to hit some of the regulatory requirements for certain for certain companies to be able to pr- use the product, and that's where Microsoft may may see kind of an inroads with with some of the enterprise. Another thing, that, and this ties into something else that I had, I had posted in here. And I don't I hate to kind of rush ahead, but I you know we use Slack very heavily at work. We have a, a you know nine person team, and sometimes we bring in outsiders, but we use it as a major you know, fun and work communication tool. But I'm understanding now, I'm starting to understand that Slack is actually pretty sloppy as far as using your processor, the way it, it just, it's a memory hog on the process, on your computer. Hmm. And, you know, we, we're not super intensive, most of us at work, um, but some of us are. Some of us are, you know, doing heavy video and sound and kind of things. Um, I had no idea. I, I don't really pay attention to it a lot. I'm a manager. But, <laughs> Um, that's the kind of stuff I would, they, they innovate on a lot of the interface stuff, but that behind the scenes thing, that's really important. And I think what you're saying about HIPAA compliance and, you know, um, security and other things like that, I, I do hope that this pushes them in that direction. Yeah. And the, 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 I, I always feel like the memory and processor is something that comes further down the road. I mean, and, and look at, look at Google Chrome, right? They're on what version 54 and, and they're just finally getting around to tweaking for, for memory and CPU utilization. So, so I, I do understand that as an issue because it's run rampant in, in things like Firefox and Chrome and even in internet Explorer. And I, and I think it's something that the companies will get to, and I'm, I'm sure Slack will definitely pay attention to that as well as I'm sure Microsoft's going to run into the same type of problem as as, as their utilities are browser based. You know, it's so ironic or like bitterly hypocritical of Google that's pushing all the web developers so hard to have really efficient websites, everything be mobile ready, and then on the other side of the the wall there, their own browser is uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that's why they're pushing all the developers to be to, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because they have to worry about their browser running. That's right. Awesome. Well, uh, we're running low on time. I want to take a quick rundown of the other stories we had lined up here. Uh, you guys can check out links. There. We have a link um, at awesomecast.net when we, this show goes up to our show notes. You can check out uh, more on any of the stories that we've had in here and secret messages that we write to each other. Uh, first of all, Matt, Matt Weller out there out east. Uh, has a mini Linux computer to power Chilla's touch table. And uh, yeah, this is a Vocore 2 that's up on Indiegogo. Uh, actually, I think, yeah, 14 days left and definitely over a goal on Indiegogo. It's it's just a tiny, tiny, tiny Linux computer with Wi-Fi uh, that looks like you could do a lot of fun with Chilla. Hmm. I just I just saw the link for that. I'm going to have to go check this out. It's got an Ethernet, an audio jack, a couple of SD card ports. Uh, and it's that that's cool. That's it's like a mini, 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 mini Raspberry Pi. Uh, so yeah, have fun with that. 
Uh, also, what we got here? Carry Potter spells with your Android phone. I got to play with this on my sister's um, Android tablet over the weekend. Uh, so uh, Lumos and, and Nox uh, for, for light will turn on the flashlight now. And there's a couple other ones in there as well. Uh, this, of course, is promotion kind of around the um, um, Fantastic Beast movie that's coming out this week. Uh, that's starting to get me excited for it, actually. Not being a huge Harry Potter fan, but definitely it looks a lot like a lot of fun. I also had a story in here. Was, well, is Patronus one of them? And your Patronus comes up on the screen and you can show it at people? That would be a nice one. Yeah, there's a few of them in there. I don't know. I'm not versed the, in the spell casting. So, um, Also, I have one in here about a chain-smoking robot. That isn't just hilarious. It's a big deal. Uh, yeah, they're doing it. You're using um, a, a chain smoking robot for for research purposes. <laughs> I thought it was kind of fun. Uh, Cindy, do you want to tell us real quick uh, who is actually limited by the uh, uh, 16 gigabyte MacBook Pro? This is, I think, like one of those articles where you know, if there's a question in the title of the article, the answer is almost always no. And so in that case, this article should be, is anyone really limited? And the answer is apparently no. That if you, unless, with the exception of Slack and um, Chrome, as we just talked about, you could like start up all of your apps on a 16 um, gig MacBook and life would go on pretty mm-hmm. well. I mean, you'd have to really load it down pretty well. There's other issues that are helped there. Obviously, there's a lot to talk about there. There's, you know, no escape key, weird touch. You're like, why isn't the screen? I don't know. There's a lot of other issues, but the memory itself is probably not going to hold anybody back. Somebody out anyway, there, I thought it was a really good post. I think I recommend reading. Somebody out there is super, super, super specialized in this, and they're, they're like, no, actually, I need somebody that's doing like a bunch of virtual machines or something. But I'm using Final Cut, and I, I aim for the 16 gigabyte, and I don't think it takes advantage of much more than that. And I'm running Final Cut along with Slack, you know, Chrome, stuff like that, uh, without too much trouble, so... All right. I uh, also did we get to your you got to your Slack thing and we talked about voting Xbox previews for anyone who wants them so anybody can sign up in the I'm, I'm program, excited right? for this. So I, I know so Microsoft's opening up their preview program that used to be called the Insider program, which you needed an invite. Um, go check it out. You'll be able to get um, advanced preview of all the updates. And the one thing that Microsoft does really well with that is then takes that information and incorporates it and will kind of push stuff more ahead in their roadmap or, or move stuff out of their roadmap, depending on what their, what, what the people running preview are saying. So mm-hmm. definitely go check that out. If you, if you want to be able to vote your way into the changes within the Xbox. And also it looks like uh, Android auto is out as well. So Android auto, they actually released the, the same app that runs kind of on the in dash unit they released it as an app for your phone. Um, it kind of gives you the concept and idea of everything that you could do if you had auto running on your actual in-dash unit, obviously probably a little bit bigger of a screen unless you duct tape a tablet to the to your, to your uh, console. But I, I thought it was kind of neat. And it, from what I'm seeing, you know, this could bring... This could bring people into, hey, what can auto do for me and potentially even influence a future auto purchase based on the fact that, hey, I tried this on my phone. I would love it on a bigger screen and integrated right into my to my car. Also, obviously, if you're tethering with Bluetooth, all the voice type stuff and, and sound based stuff would be pretty nice to have. Awesome. Hopefully a- Apple takes a chapter out of this book. Awesome. Check it out. All right. Uh, that is all the awesome things we have for this week. Cynthia Klosky, thank you so much for joining us once again. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. And uh, go, oh, so, uh, of course, on Twitter, at Cynthia Klosky, anything else people can check out? Well, come in and check out uh, shiftcollaborative.com. Um, I don't know. You're, you're going to get to come and see us soon, uh, but hopefully we're going to have something actually where we let people come by the office and say hello uh, for the holiday season. I'll, I'll post about that. Awesome, awesome. Oh, I missed the one that you invented me like last year and I missed it. I'm 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 always have my schedule in the way. Uh go check them out. Great stuff happening over there. Uh Chilla at Chilla on the Twitter and Chillatech.net. Yep, Josh Chill on the Facebook. Please go out on the Twitter and retweet my desire for I voted stickers in Allegheny County. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, SorgatronMedia.com, AwesomeCast.net, where all the things are. MikeSorg.com gets to all the things that I'm into. And uh, uh, we have 
PodCamp Pittsburgh is going to have a boot camp coming up. Food blogging here at the Carnegie Library and Beachview, if you want to check it out, is free. It is, I believe, that is Wednesday the 16th. And then that Sunday, we're going to be having a Sorgatron Media Coffee. it will be the last time to come hang with me before I take off to Thailand. And Chilla, we probably should have a special talk on here about traveling internationally with technology uh, before I head out. Um, yeah, so. we, and we, we're, we're going to need someone that travels internationally regularly because I haven't done it in probably seven years so if anybody out there is is a international traveler please uh hit us up what's that silence coming back yeah oh i'll hook you up okay awesome so uh we'll hook that up uh go check out everything awesome cast on that subscribe rate, review all the things tell a friend and support us on patreon if you'd like to do that too Hey, I may need the Patreon money in order to get back from Thailand if things go south. So, uh, so just putting that out there. Uh, so, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you to our awesome co-host today. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.